Grace Hudson and this is Jared Davis, our worship coordinator for the church. Um, for this week, I thought we'd do something cool and give you some more behind the scenes of what we do here with worship. Um, I get questions, I don't know about Jared, but I get tons of questions all the time about what does that do? What is that thing on stage? So I thought we would just go through all of that with you if you're interested. So um, first I thought we'd start with the guitar gear because in my mind that's the most complex thing <laughs> and I always want to know more about it. So uh, Jared, tell us a little bit about what this is and what you do to make you sound so good on a given Sunday. Uh, I'll try to keep it short. So uh, a pedal board, what is a pedal board? It's a, it takes uh, your guitar from sounding like this to like, I don't know, let's turn everything on. So you, uh, you know, you can't just go out and buy one thing and now you're a guitar player. Uh, so it allows me to have dynamics instead of just kind of being stuck to just loud and soft, kind of like a breakaway from acoustic guitar. Uh, cool. So That's awesome. Why don't you give us like a quick rundown because I see you got tons of stuff going on down here. Yeah. So just like go through each one and tell me what they do. Uh, I've got uh, some, some things up top here that are just uh, stuff that I leave on. Uh, <laughs> I just like the way it sounds, so that's why it stays on. Yeah. Um, uh, you gotta have a tuner because uh, no one wants to hear <laughs> on a Sunday. So, yes, very uh, critical. Even though if you're sitting like right up front, you'll still kind of hear <laughs> some of that. Uh, so there's there's that. Gotta have that. I have, uh, for lack of a better word, just like an organ sound. <laughs> done on a synthesizer and now you can do it on a guitar very cool uh this uh just kind of is more for just so the pretty stuff yeah the nice ambient pretty sounds that's how yeah. you get those um this is uh clean yeah <laughs> guitar this is not this is a little more very cool. distorted uh so varying uh mm -hmm. i mean usually if it's me it's usually <laughs> yeah. Pretty abrupt. Um, and then uh, this is kind of a uh, just kind of a weirdo. So what do you call that effect right there? Uh, spaceship noises. Spaceship noises. That's the official uh, term. <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of nice for uh, building parts where there's there's tension and yeah. stuff. So uh, Very cool. rather than just trying to play something, it's nice to just step on something. And then a, another pretty pedal, uh, just a big reverb, so. Without reverb. Super. So, so which of these would you say that you use the most in a typical worship set? Uh, uh, I mean, delay, delay is a big one, obviously. Uh, uh, any, uh, <laughs> every, every church guitar player does this trick. The, uh, awesome. That's, that's crucial because even for um, quiet parts, you have to have. <laughs> that's nice. Man, that's crazy. How much you can do what you got going on here. And yeah, there's, it's not just a nonsense. I'm usually trying to, <laughs> sometimes it's, it's a, trying to count and tap something in. <laughs> Yeah, so if you guys ever hear that in a worship set in the beginning of a song, if you listen closely, sometimes you can hear the guitar player. And I'm very sorry. No, I have all guitar players are like that. I think it's really cool. Until they make a quieter switch to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, the most important thing, I think, is uh, uh, this, uh, because 
it doesn't get tangled. Yeah. It usually goes right there. Uh, yeah. Nice. So rather than having another black cable, uh, or I used to use a white cable, but uh, I got yelled at because it stood out on stage. <laughs> Even though this one's red, but white was a little more. Yeah. But that one last thing to trip over. So. All right, yeah. now play something really cool. Uh, <laughs> Guitar players uh, love when people say that to them. No pressure. I can. Uh, Put your pedals to work. Let's I hear got something. You, uh, <laughs> The number one question I think I hear from people asking about what we do up here is about the headphones we wear on stage. So Jared, I know you have yours with you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what they are? So uh, uh, I, I used the, the term back in the day earlier, <laughs> um, but uh, it used to be you'd have speakers and a very, very loud stage and everything was just a competition to get heard. Uh, there used to be guitar amps, keyboard amps, bass amps, uh, there wasn't a plastic thing around the drums. It was so a it was hot just, mess up here. <laughs> yeah, and over, you know, years of doing that, you're damaging your hearing. So with in-ear monitors, uh, you're able to preserve your hearing a little bit and also hear a little more detail and everyone doesn't have to compete with stage noise. I mean, the biggest thing is drums and cymbals and, and with these things in our ears, we don't yes. really, more so that's a front of house, that's a sound. Mm -hmm person's yeah, <laughs> qualm, totally. but but uh, what this enables us to do, again, uh, allows us to use a talk back microphone so we can communicate, you know, and also uh, if there is any issues where our team back at the soundboard needs to communicate something to us like, hey, the building's on fire or, <laughs> you know, God forbid, you know, we, there's another issue or mm -hmm. something that we need to address or we have to get off stage or mm -hmm someone who's speaking is violently ill or something. So uh, those are just the two worst case scenarios that came to my mind. You went to the so, worst case possible. Uh, so, but uh, another neat uh, add on is that we're, we're able to use a metronome, which sometimes mm -hmm. uh, may or may not get heard depending on how loud someone runs their right. in-ear mix. And if they pull an in-ear out and have a yes. microphone, sometimes that will uh, yes. we'll hear like a little in case you don't know, the drummer launches something from back there that he literally has a metronome that keeps us all on the same beat. So we're all able to stay unified without the drummer having to constantly keep time for us. And, and with uh, being a guitar player with uh, tapping delay times and mm -hmm. programming, you can actually, hey, what's the BPM for this? Right. Uh, beats per minute. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you can actually dial that in and you don't have to tap as much or you just tap at the beginning of the song and you're not doing a bunch of like Yes, exactly. So uh, one thing I will say too is you may have noticed or may not notice if you're a long time CCer, over the last couple months you might have noticed our stage has gotten a lot cleaner and you might be wondering why that is. And that's thanks to these guys. All of our frontline people started wearing um, these called packs. And so the headphones actually go directly into these and these go into our back pockets. And this allows us to wirelessly have our in-ears at all times, which is awesome. We're no longer carrying cords outside our back pockets that go to little machines. So our mixes are actually controlled via our app on our phone. So I asked Jared to pull up his app. <laughs> I asked Jared to pull up his app and he'll show you in just a second because this allows us to customize our mix however we want. If I want more guitar or less vocals, I can tweak that as we go on through practice and it stays from our practice to Sunday so our mix can stay the same and just for us. So Jared, if you can, show them a little bit about your mix. Yeah, so uh, you just have every, uh, there's like an endless amount of channels on this thing. So we have everything split up, you know, kick drum, snare drum, tom, tom. So I have a pretty, I don't know if that's generous. You might not be able to see or not, but. Drums, but uh, 
you know, these little sliders here. So every single fader he can change for every single thing on stage, he can manipulate to how he likes. And, so uh, just tell us a little bit about what you like in your mix. I, I like a little bit of everything. I, I, I don't really believe in uh, turning stuff up. I, I had a friend many, many moons ago uh, that I used uh, back when we were using P16s, I came in behind them and uh, plugged in and there was like <laughs> that person's guitar and metronome yeah. and maybe lead vocal. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, that was really interesting to me. Like, and again, I'm, I'm not knocking it, but for me, it's like, well, that's not even fun. Like yeah. half, of, half of like, you know, what I, my, my big takeaway and like what, how I recharge up here is kind of like taking joy and what I'm hearing someone else do or hearing someone develop and grow more. So when I don't have to play all the guitar parts that I can trust and I listen to someone else. So, mm -hmm. so I usually, uh, like to you know have everything to where i can look at someone and, and hear what they're doing yes absolutely uh you know kind of the same thing if i was to run sound which i don't run sound <laughs> but the few times i've been kind of in the hot seat and had to do it on the fly mm -hmm. i i would do the same thing i would like to mix everything even enough and again sound standpoint i'm not playing so i don't have a favorite instrument obviously right. whatever i'm playing i usually try that to put hottest, a right? little bit hotter <laughs> or more balanced so it, it feels more dynamic yeah. so uh, gotta hear who's leading, gotta hear the talk mm -hmm. back, um, gotta have bass, um, yeah, a little bit of everything. Yeah, so. that's awesome. And that's my favorite thing about it is that you can completely customize it to any way you want it. You can have all drums, no drums. Um, I know some of our vocals who, vocalists who aren't as rhythm proficient, they turn that click up as loud as it can go yep. and, or turn you know, the talk back so they can hear cues as loud as they can go. And that's super helpful. So we're all able to make it what fits for us. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jared, one question I get all the time is specifically about this microphone, because people see you and other MDs talking into it and then they don't hear it in their house. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about what this is. Why do we have it? What's it for? Back in the day uh, before in years, this microphone was usually on stage for the person who uh, really wanted to sing on the team, but you didn't really <laughs> want to turn them up in the house. Uh, but with uh, in-ear monitors, it's actually really uh, useful because this only goes to the team's ears. So you won't hear, uh, if you see me singing, again, it's not because, wow, Jared can't sing and they just brought him down. I'm <laughs> telling them verse, two, three, four. I'm not like shouting hype things or anything. I'm just, you know, Sometimes counting. You well, yeah, sometimes I'll, you know, say, let's get it, y'all, or, yeah. or something goofy, but, um, or just laugh off about, uh, you know, whatever, like, during practice, it's more uh, oh, yes. comical, just because when someone biffs it or, or misses a part, it's like, cool, that was, <laughs> it's very jazz of you, very so, jazz of you, um, that's right. so, uh, that's what that is, and, uh, we actually have one in the drum, uh, Cage? I don't like calling it a cage because it sounds, it sounds uh, <laughs> negative, but uh, back by the drums there is a microphone and that way during practice when they have mm -hmm. ideas they're not having to get up every two right. seconds and share that with us. So it makes it way easier to communicate as a team. Most of the vocalists have their microphones mm -hmm. and usually everyone else out here is yeah. able to talk. So to usually only one person has that each week and that's our MD or music director. That's what MD stands for. So what is the purpose of the music director? What is their role <clears throat> on a weekend? So uh, from my standpoint, what I usually do is, because uh, I'm also the one that builds our pro presenter mm -hmm. stuff. So if there's misspellings <laughs> or something uh, doesn't line up, that's maybe my fault sometimes. But uh, what I do, uh, it's basically your job to kind of make sure that you're on par with, with uh, our production team because they're following who's leading. So right. sometimes as a vocalist, they're not, you know, we have a, uh, a confidence monitor on the back wall. Some, some of you, you know, when you look behind you, you can see words and there's sermon notes and stuff for, for Bryant. But uh, for us, it's lyrics, so it, it matches up to what you're seeing on this screen mm -hmm. or if you're watching from home at the very bottom. So as an MD, it's following that, not just making sure that the team is in sync with each other, but in sync with production because mm -hmm. one can't really exist with that. Yes, the other. We can't, we can't get up here and, and do what we're doing without yes. our amazing team. Also our live stream team. It, it's, it, there's a lot involved, yeah. uh, but uh, in the same thing, they can't, I mean, they have nothing to produce or, mm -hmm. you know, mix uh, without us up here. So that's, that's the job is to really know the songs mm -hmm. 
and confidently and calmly, <laughs> uh, kind of uh, more often than not to, you know, we, you know, sometimes you'll see busier weeks where someone's on this mic a lot or it's really not. It's just kind of a, a mm -hmm. you know, safety net just in case there's, there's yes. something kind of squirrely or questionable. Or... Yes, it just keeps us all on the same page and make sure we're all going the same direction. Yeah. Whether that be parts of the song or dynamic, like we want to make sure we're all hitting the same part at the same time. Yeah. So sometimes during, during rehearsal it feels really good, but when you're live you think, like, I just need a little bit more. So yeah. it's kind of cool being able to verbalize that rather yeah. than like, I really hope that whoever's playing bass or drums <laughs> or playing the other guitar is like looking at me yes. instead I can go, hey man, play a little bit more <laughs> yeah. or, you know, uh, Very cool. or calm down a little bit. Sometimes yeah. that's the issue. It's easy. So, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit behind the scenes of what we do to um, make it happen on Sunday mornings. Uh, thank you to Jared who took the time to film that with me and I hope you guys enjoyed it.